Hello and welcome to Months and Made This. My name is Michael and I cook vegan food. So if you want more vegan recipes and content, you should click that subscribe button below and give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. Today, I'm like super excited for the recipes I'm sharing with you today. I have a recipe for an easy corn risotto that is gonna be made right here in an instant pot. It takes just about six minutes. And actually, while I'm talking, let me get some things started. I'm gonna throw some onion in there just to make the most out of time. But the best part about this corn risotto, which is gonna be made with fresh corn from my friend's garden, shout out to 3040 Farm, Steve and John for growing this beautiful corn. Uh, but I'm gonna take this risotto and I'm going to turn it into arancini. So we're gonna make these delicious fried little balls of risotto goodness. And one of the things that's gonna help pull this recipe off is this delicious Nutrilicious nutritional yeast. Today's video is sponsored by Gloriously Vegan who makes this nutritional yeast. Now I've been using nutritional yeast since going vegan. Pretty much every savory recipe on my channel has nutritional yeast and I was gonna make a like a playlist of all my nutritional yeast recipes and it's in literally everything that's not a dessert. So I've tried a few, I've just bought it from the bulk bins for the most part, but after Gloriously Vegan sent me this Nutrilicious, I was like, oh my God, this is a different game. This is so incredible. Uh, you definitely need to try it. If you go to the website, gloriouslyvegan.com slash Munson, which I'll also, leave, uh, I'll also post that link below, um, you can read a little bit more about this product. You can even order it. Depending on how much you buy, you can save 55% on your order. Get a couple of digital eBooks as well. It's great stuff. Thanks again to Gloriously Vegan and Nutrition uh, Nutrilicious for sponsoring this video because the nutritional yeast and my next ingredient are what truly make this dish. Uh, and that's miso paste. So let's throw in this miso with the onion. So the combination of miso paste, which adds like a salty funkiness uh, and nutritional yeast, which adds a cheesiness and a depth of umami. Uh, together, they kind of take the place of a Parmesan cheese. We're making this vegan, no Parmesan cheese. So that combination of Nutrilicious and miso paste just completely does it. So I'm gonna let the onion and the miso cook here just a little bit. The miso is gonna toast. The onion is gonna cook down slightly. Uh, and we'll proceed with adding our next couple ingredients. Again, it cooks for six minutes and then we'll have risotto. So we don't want the onion to brown at all. And just as it begins to soften, we wanna add our next ingredient, which is arborio rice. And this is a special rice that is used to make risotto. And what is special about that particular rice is that it is really high in starch. So as the liquid comes into contact with the rice, the starch kind of like squirts, that's not a great word. Uh, the starch is released from the grains of rice and that's what creates the thick texture that risotto is known for. So I'm just gonna stir the rice around here with the onions and miso for just a sec. Uh, I did add a little bit of olive oil in the beginning. You could make this entirely oil free if you wanted. All right, next ingredient is going to be some white wine. You wanna make sure to keep this completely vegan. You wanna to go to a website like barnivore.com, barn like B-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-E, like carnivore or herbivore, um, but barn. And basically it's a place that you can look up wines and different brands, beer, all types of alcohol to see if it is vegan. Um, this is a uh, Pinot Grigio. And I just checked as I was going through the grocery store, typed it in, found one that was vegan friendly. And I'm just gonna stir the wine in there until it is evaporated. I don't know if you can see it that well, but some of the starches are already starting to release. And I love that smell. Though like once the wine is added, like it smells like risotto in here. All right, next thing is going to be some vegan chicken broth. And uh, if you notice I wasn't giving you any amounts, I apologize for that. Um, basically the entire recipe, which is gonna be printable is on MunsonMadeThis.com. So um, you can get the full ingredient list and amounts on there. And I'll also have that linked below. So I added the rice, the onions, miso, a bit of wine, this vegan chicken broth, which is just like a bouillon that you add to water. The next thing is the nutritional yeast. So this is my Nutrilicious. And again, I'm adding quite a bit here because I want that cheesy kind of Parmesan-y umami flavor. Stir this through. 
And I mentioned that this is a corn risotto. So again, my friends grew this beautiful corn. I've already removed it from the cobs, but I'm actually gonna put the cobs in here. And that's just, uh, just going to impart some of the corn flavor because I don't want the corn to cook at all. Um, I wanna keep it fresh, still have a bit of a bite to it. So I'll add that at the very end. And the rest of the ingredients I have here will be added at the end as well. So that is it, that is our risotto. I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm going to switch it from, if I can figure this out. I think I got it, it's hard to work backwards here. Uh, cancel this, switch it to pressure cook. And wow, this is really hard upside down. And six minutes. That's it. As soon as the six minutes is up, I will quick release the pressure. We'll stir, up, stir it a bit, add these other ingredients, and we have risotto. So I quick release this so I can open it up. First thing I wanna do is take out the corn cobs. That's because they have done their job. Now the next part's kind of important. We wanna make sure to stir this around and we wanna be a little bit vigorous with it just so we can release a little bit more of the starch that's in the rice because it hasn't really had much agitation at all. If I notice at this point, so it's on the thicker side, which I actually like for the purpose of making arancini. Um, if it was a little bit too thick for you, you thought that it wanted to be, you wanted it to be a little bit more runny in consistency, you could just add a bit more water and that would be great, uh, or broth, excuse me. Next things I wanna add are some lemon juice and that just gives a little bit of brightness. Some vegan butter, I'm actually using Miyoko's today. And the last thing is the corn that we have taken off the cob. And this is from two cobs and I'm gonna use just most of it. I wanna be able to garnish with that. And now we stir. And we have our delicious vegan corn risotto. Smells amazing. Again, normally if I saw that it was this thick, I would probably, uh, if I were gonna be eating it as is, I would add a little bit more broth but because I'm gonna be making my risotto balls with it, this is the perfect consistency. So I'm gonna dish a little bit up, give it a taste, and then I'll show you the next steps to making arancini. You can eat your risotto just like this. It is mm, delicious and corny and buttery. I put a little fresh parsley on top for pretty. So this is ready to go as it is, but we are not done yet. Uh, I'm gonna take this, put it in the fridge, let it chill a little bit, become a little bit more solid, and then we will turn it into arancini or risotto balls. Here is a batch of the risotto that I made yesterday. It has been in the fridge overnight. It is nice and firm and perfect for me to use a scoop to dish up. And I'm gonna get about 18 or so. Uh, and I just have a baking sheet here just so it's easier for me to put the scoops on. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna scoop them into little mounds. Then I'm going to show you how I make a breading, which is a cornflake breading, kind of staying with that corn theme. Uh, and then we will actually roll them into balls, put them through flour, a nice kind of a vegan egg mixture, which is chickpea flour and water. And then we will roll it into the cornflake mixture and fry them. So to get there, we have to make scoops. So I just finished scooping the uh, risotto out here onto a baking sheet and I decided to do the flour portion before I do the cornflake uh, portion. This is just all purpose flour. If you wanted to make this gluten-free, use a gluten-free flour, that's fine. Uh, and basically what you wanna do is take each of these and it does help if they're fairly fresh out of the fridge. Um, I just like to roll the mounds into flour and then with my hands, work them into balls and I want them to be fairly tight um, I want them to be fairly compact and as perfectly round as I can get. They're gonna be a little bit delicate, that's fine, um, but you just wanna work them into balls and try to have them coated in flour as much as possible. And I'm just gonna put them back here on the baking sheet. They are kind of delicate, so you know, be forceful as you're forming the balls, but delicate and understanding of the fact that they're just made out of rice. And they have feelings. And they have feelings, absolutely. Admittedly, rolling these into balls, the whole arancini process is actually a little bit of a, a labor of love. You only spent six minutes making the risotto in the instant pot, but here's where the true 
cooking comes into play. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the zen of repetitive cooking processes like this. It's like scoop them out, roll them into balls and flour. Then we'll have a kind of a vegan egg wash. Like I said, it's a chickpea flour mixture. Then we'll dredge it through this cornmeal thing. And I mean, it's something that you're, because you're going to be making like 15, 16, 18, depending on how big your scoop is, uh, you can make a huge batch of these and have them. You can freeze them. They freeze really well. You can keep them in the refrigerator to have on hand. So it's like you, you put in the work, you put in the time, and uh, you have them for you ready to go in the future. Um, the reason I actually developed this recipe is the, the friends that grew the corn invited Ben and I over to a party at their house. Um, it was a corn harvesting party, and it was to use the corn from their yard in various recipes. So I tested this out, made it a couple times in a week, fell in love, feel like most of the people at the party enjoyed these. I also made a poblano sweet potato chowder with the corn. Poblano, sweet potato poblano corn chowder. Uh, that was, I thought, really great as well. My friend Steve was cool too because he, I guess I mean, people knew that I cooked vegan food, but he never used like the V word when telling people what they were eating. It was like, oh, here, Michael made these risotto balls or Michael made the corn chowder. And I think people ate it and enjoyed it without sort of the like vegan stigma attached to it. Am I right in saying that, Ben? He's behind the camera. Yeah, I never heard the word <laughs> vegan once. Right. Which is like, do you want people to know that the food that they're eating that's delicious is vegan, or do you want them to enjoy the food without judgment? And I guess you could surprise them later and be like, surprise, that was vegan, but. I mean, to be fair, I think the only thing that was non vegetarian there was short ribs. Yeah, but the two dishes that I made were the only vegan okay. dishes. Although no, there was a no, there was a coconut. there was like yeah, it was like a coconut corn salad that was really good. Yeah, I don't know I just love the idea of using like seasonal produce and being like okay, here's your task. Come up with a recipe that uses this ingredient, and I had a lot of fun. And all this is to say that it's a little bit labor intensive to make these balls, but you know what? Pull a friend into the kitchen or a loved one, chat with them like I'm chatting with you all, and uh, before you know it. The job is done. So I'm going to uh, clean this up here, set this aside. We'll do the cornflake mixture and then we'll be ready to fully bread these and we'll get to frying. Uh, I also didn't mention that this is a fully deep fried recipe, but I am going to, with my dirty hands here, I am going to try to put them in the air fryer. I haven't tried that yet. I wanna see if they can be air fried because that could be a breakthrough for some people. So uh, I'll be right back. I have everything else I need for the breading of these. Uh, let's start with the cornflake mixture. In the food processor, I have a few cups of cornflakes. These are an organic cornflake. I use organic because they tend to have no D3, which D3 is normally animal derived. So if you're trying to keep your cornflakes vegan, look for organic, that helps. To the cornflakes, I'm going to be adding my Nutrilicious nutritional yeast. Again, quite a bit. You wanna make sure that the outer coating that this is gonna be has a lot of flavor. Also adding some salt, pepper, a little bit of chili flake, and then some onion and garlic powder. And I like to add one more thing, which is, I have to grab it over here, just a little splash of oil. And this is just so as we blend it, the seasonings stick to the cornflakes. Uh, and I'm gonna food process this, take it down basically to a sandy crumb texture. I want to check the texture here. I want it to have, I don't want it to have any bits of flake, but I do want it to have just like a little bit of crunch and texture. It looks perfect. So I'm going to transfer this to a bowl. Let's just start, uh, I guess it's a bowl plate here. Uh, and this is where I'm going to do my rolling of the balls. Okay. So the balls already have the flour on them. This is the outside coating, and I keep teasing this vegan egg wash. Now, I love chickpea flour. Probably the two ingredients I use most are nutritional yeast and chickpea flour. This is equal parts chickpea flour and water, and this is going to be the egg wash. So the 
balls that are coated in flour are gonna go in here and then directly into the crumbs. And then we'll have perfectly coated arancini that are ready to be fried up. We are in the home stretch here, time to do the final breading. And I'm going to work in batches of maybe three or four, roll the floured balls into the chickpea flour mixture, and then into the crumbs. And the reason I work in batches of say three to four is just because the amount of space that I have inside of my cornflake coating dish. The flour really, really helps the chickpea flour mixture stick. So as you see, there's I'm out of space here, so I'm gonna start coating them. I do try to keep like a wet hand and a dry hand. Sometimes it works. I usually end up having to clean off my hands a couple of times in between. You're gonna get crumbs everywhere as I'm already getting crumbs on the floor, but you know what? Messy food tastes better. And look at this. Just like that, we have beautiful arancini. Uh, I am going to work them a little bit more into balls. I think they do firm up a lot nicer once you have the crumb on them, but come on, look at that. Beautiful. Try to get them as close to perfect circles as I possibly can. Again, you can freeze them after this. You can just keep them in the refrigerator or you can fry them immediately. safe. Almost there. Home stretch. Just a couple more left to go. And I'm actually really hungry, so I'm excited to be able to fry off a couple of these for you. There's also, I haven't mentioned it yet, there's a sauce. It is a Calabrian chili aioli which is basically Calabrian chilies, some red pepper and vegan mayo. Um, that gets blended together. You can serve it along the side of these. It was a really big hit. I was trying to think of like a good sauce because you know I want to preserve the corn flavor. I didn't want anything to kind of compete with it. And I think the roasted red pepper and the Calabrian chili really do a great job of accompanying these. And that is the very last one. I'm gonna transfer these to a container here just to uh, make storage a little bit easier. And this just happens to be a perfect size for 15 of them. Again, this can go into the fridge. Uh, when I cooked these up at the party, I basically arrived with them in this container. I had two of them, I think I had like 30 that I brought uh, and then just fried them on site. And that was better than, cause you know, with something that's fried, you definitely want to make sure to do that like right before people eat it or as close to when people eat it. So they can arrive like this, beautiful arancini. Let me clean this up here and then we will fry a couple off. And like I said, I'm going to put one or two in the air fryer as well to see if that works. I hope it does. Cause I kind of hate deep frying even though it's delicious. My oil has come up to temperature. I'm using this bizarre wok thing that I actually got from uh, my grandparents and our arancini are ready to go. So I'm going to carefully place them on my spider here a couple at a time, put them into the oil carefully. Beautiful sizzle. I think I'm gonna start with four. I don't wanna overcrowd the oil. Eh. Yeah, let's start with four. Just gonna move them around slightly, making sure that they're not stuck to the bottom. When I did this at my friend's house for the party, they had a big uh, Le Creuset stock pot. It's full of oil, could do a ton at a time. It was great. Here at home for myself and Ben, uh, this size does great. And this is gonna go just for a couple of minutes. Gonna try to keep them turning, trying to keep them nice and round. And uh, these are gonna go probably like maybe four or five minutes with these, I don't know how many of you know this, the word arancini actually means orange in Italian. So you wanna cook them until they do get a nice golden color. This isn't where we want just like a light tan. We want a really nice dark golden color on these. So we're gonna push them until they get there.
when they get beautifully golden orange brown, go ahead and remove them. I'm placing them on a paper towel lined plate. And as soon as they hit the paper towel, I'm just gonna hit them with a little bit of salt. Watching shows like Top Chef, I hear this keeps things crispy. And there we are, beautiful arancini. I'm gonna fry up a couple more of these and then we're gonna plate these up and give them a taste because I'm hungry and these look and smell incredible. Here are my beautiful corn arancini and I'm plating them here, trying to get them into a nice little stack next to my Calabrian chili aioli. Again, the full recipe for that is gonna be on MunsonMadeThis.com as well as the full recipe for these arancini. Last thing, I'm just gonna to top them with a bit of fresh parsley for some beautiful green color. And there we have it. We started out with corn risotto, took six minutes in the Instant Pot, refrigerated it overnight, formed it into balls, made a delicious cornflake crust, deep fried it, and now we have these. A note, I had mentioned that I was going to try them in the air fryer. Um, just because of the noise level, I couldn't do that right now. So I will have just an addendum. So stick around right after I say goodbye uh, and I will have my notes on air frying. So stay tuned for that. Uh, without further ado, let's give one of these a taste because I am hungry. Come on. Beautiful, let's open it up and see what it's like inside. Look at that, nice, it's creamy. And I'm gonna dip it in the sauce. Such a great crunch too. I feel like I like overacted that moment, but I needed you guys to know how truly incredible this is. And I'm not kidding. It is that combination of miso and nutritional yeast, like the Nutrilicious that I used. It just does something incredible. Corn is what I added to mine. You could add mushrooms, whatever kind of flavor you want. These are next level. You have to give them a try. Bring them to your next party. Bring them to yourself at the table because you deserve it and you should treat yourself or just make the risotto. That's incredible on its own. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, must try. Check out Nutrilicious. I will have a link below. Get yourself some. It's truly the best nutritional yeast that I've ever had. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. God. They're like better than the first time. So sadly, I have to report that the air fried version didn't work. The issue I am guessing is that the outside doesn't get crispy enough to hold all of the insides once that becomes hot and starts to become nice and molten and gooey. So it just kind of flattens and the outside didn't really get that crispy. It just kind of dried out and the inside just kind of oozed. So. For this particular recipe, I don't suggest using the air fryer. I think air frying would be a great way to reheat them after they've been fried. So I think this is a recipe you're gonna have to either just enjoy the risotto uh, on its own if you wanna make that oil free or you're concerned about oil. Um, but the uh, arancinis, they definitely need to be deep fried. Um, there it is. Oh.